Hey guys, what's cracking? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming back at you with some more spooky content. Specifically, I want to share my ghost story. And apparently it's gonna start thunderstorming, so that sets the mood a little bit, I guess. Now I have a couple of these ghost stories. This is the first paranormal experience that I had that I couldn't write off, debunk, or excuse as anything other than paranormal. Up until this point, I had some strange experiences here and there, but for the most part, I was able to find explanations for them that were completely natural, that weren't paranormal or supernatural or anything like that. So with that in mind, I thought it would be fun to come on here and share my ghost story, starting with this very first experience that happened to me about three years ago in the spring of 2017. Straight up guys, I think I hear someone, like a woman, talking in my apartment. Back in the spring of 2017, my boyfriend and I were living in our first apartment together, which was the place that we lived before we lived here. And when we first moved in, the place seemed relatively normal, as everyone always says when they move into some place that's haunted. It was just your typical suburban, college town, one bedroom apartment. I'd say maybe the first like 10 months that we were in this place, we didn't have any sort of incidents. There was nothing, everything was completely normal. And then in the last two months that we were there, things were popping off one after another very, very quickly over the course of like eight weeks. And the very first paranormal experience that I had within this apartment was the evening that my boyfriend and I decided that we were not gonna renew our lease at this apartment. So we had to give a 60 day notice. We told the apartment complex that we were not going to resign. We went back to our apartment after telling them we weren't going to resign and had a relatively normal evening and it gets pretty late. So I decide that I'm gonna go to bed and my boyfriend says that he's going to take a shower and then he would come to bed. So I'm in our bedroom and my dog follows me in there. She hops up on the bed. So it's the two of us in the bedroom by ourselves and then my boyfriend is in the bathroom that is kind of catty cornered to, to our bedroom. So this is like the threshold of my bedroom door, and then this is where the bathroom is, if that makes sense. And then on the other side, kind of parallel to where my bed is, is a wall that's shared with a coat closet, and then out in the apartment is our office space. And I'm laying in bed, and I'm in there by myself, just me and my dog, while my boyfriend is in the shower. And I hear what I can only describe as, as either chains, or one of those medieval axes being dragged across the bedroom wall from within the coat closet. So on the wall that was shared between the coat closet and our bedroom. I love how I touched the wall here. <laughs> and my first thought was that someone was in our home. Like someone had broken in and been hiding in the closet waiting for my boyfriend to be in a compromised position where neither of us could fight him off. I call my boyfriend on his cell phone. He brings it with him in the shower for some reason unbeknownst to me. So I call him and he answers the phone. He's like, what, like what's going on? And I'm kind of frazzled, but I tell him that I hear something moving around in the coat closet out in our office space. So he gets out of the shower and goes and checks out the closet. Nothing has been moved around. And keep in mind, this is a fairly organized closet. There's nothing metal that could be dragging across the wall. It's just clothes on hangers. So he looks around in there and then does a quick perimeter sweep of the apartment and doesn't see anything. He comes back into the bedroom and says, you know, there's nothing in here. Maybe you would fall asleep and dreamt it, even though I hadn't been in the bedroom that long and it wasn't that late. I wanna say it was maybe around like 11 o'clock. We pretty much just wrote it off as being maybe the house settling or something like that. And he got back in the shower and I waited very uncomfortably with my dog in the bed until he came to bed immediately after getting out of the shower. And then things were kind of still for another couple of weeks. And then the second incident Incident occurred. This happened one evening while my boyfriend and I and our dog were on our outside balcony. One thing that we really liked to do in this apartment was going out on our balcony at night. We were both night owls. It wasn't uncommon for us to go out there at night just to take in the city view, hang out. I can't remember why, but we were out there pretty late on this occasion, like really late in the evening. We're sitting on the patio just enjoying each other's company when we start hearing knocking coming from the balcony wall that is shared with our bedroom closet. I remember thinking that someone was building like a bed like Ikea furniture or something like that on either a floor above or the floor below us. And I thought that was really strange because it was really late in the evening. And we're sitting there listening to it and we start to realize that the knocks are coming in succession like this. It 
doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that that isn't a good sign. And then we really start listening and realize that it's coming from within our closet and that it couldn't be one of our neighbors building furniture because of how late it was and it was right next to us within like a two feet radius of where we were standing. So my boyfriend going back to this whole, what if there's someone in the apartment still? What if they never left? What if someone is hiding in here? We're frantic. He goes inside to check it out. He checks our closet, checks all of the other closets in the apartment and then does another perimeter sweep. And I would just like to say that my boyfriend is very, very skeptical. He doesn't believe in this sort of thing. So the fact that he says what he says next was disconcerting to me at the time. He walks out on the porch and says, there's nothing in our apartment. The knocking stopped while I was in the closet checking it out, but it's happening now. I can hear it happening now, and so can I. And this is when he points out that the knocks are coming in three, and that it's also 3 a.m., or just about 3 a.m. I wanna say it was around like 2.45, 2.50. And we would make a point to not really talk about it for at least a few days to let things settle down. But then we bring it up again when we take our dog on a walk a few days later, so we're not in the apartment. And again, my boyfriend's really skeptical, but he's saying, you know, it's really weird. I've been getting weird vibes from inside the apartment. You know a lot about this, what do you think? And I end up telling him, you know, from my research and my understanding of it, the more we pay attention to it, the more it is going to appear to us, to show itself to us. So when we're in the apartment, we do not need to talk about it. We do not need to, give it any of that attention. We just need to go about our normal everyday lives as if there's not anything in the apartment. So right then and there, two, three days later, we make kind of a pact to just not say anything about it to each other while in the apartment at all. And things kind of die down for another few weeks. We're coming up on the end of our lease here, packing boxes left and right in the apartment, just trying to get all of our ducks in a row so that when moving day comes along, we can just move to our new apartment. So it's my hypothesis that when we were kind of preparing for our move, getting everything together, we were disrupting the space enough to upset whatever spirit was haunting that apartment. Because the closer that we got to the end of our lease, the more things kind of started popping off. And this is about maybe a month after the first experience that I had in our little coat closet and about another month away from the end of our lease at this apartment. Keep in mind, at this point, my boyfriend and I have made a point to not give it any attention while in the apartment. And on this particular occasion, the third experience that I had, I was sitting on one of our couches in the living room. And the way that our living room was set up was basically there's our office space here and then a little hallway that kind of went past a breakfast bar in our kitchen. And then an open concept living room here. So I'm sitting on the couch that is adjacent to this hallway and I can see back into our office. And this is the room that we kind of started on packing first. So there are a lot of boxes in this part of the apartment. Gives me chills just thinking about it. I don't like it. Getting really uncomfortable. And I'm sitting on the couch, I'm home by myself. My boyfriend is either at work or at class and I'm at home alone with a dog. And Lily, just because I feel like I need to say where she is for all of these experiences, she's on the porch. So I'm sitting on this couch watching some YouTube video on TV. I don't think it was paranormal related at all. And whilst watching this video, I start to hear things coming from the office, which sounded like boxes moving around. But out of the corner of my eye, I, I can see slight movement. I'm not saying like poltergeist throwing stuff across the room movement, but slight movement out of the corner of my eye. And I can also hear things within the boxes kind of being rustled around, which really freaks me out. But I do my best to remain calm. I finish the video that I was watching. I go and ask Lily if she wants to go on a walk. We leave the apartment until my boyfriend comes home. And he pulls up, he sees me and my dog out in the dog park and he's like, what are y'all doing? And I tell him what I saw. And he being the skeptic is like, no way. Like I know I have been getting weird vibes, but there's no way you have been seeing things moving around in the apartment. That's crazy. 
Like catching weird vibes here and there in the apartment is one thing, but seeing things move around and hearing things move around, that is a bit absurd. And I kind of agree with him at first. And I'm like, okay, you know what? There's probably a logical explanation for this. I'm just seeing things. I'm scared while I'm in the apartment. Maybe you're right. Then the final experience that I had in this apartment happened, I'd say about a week or so later. So we're coming up on maybe the last two weeks that we're in this apartment and I am packing up boxes in our kitchen, which shared an open concept area with the office space where that coat closet where I had the first experience was where this moving boxes experience happened. So I'm assuming that somewhere in this kitchen slash office area had the most energy. So I'm in the kitchen and I'm packing two boxes, both of which has our dishware in it. The first box I'm packing with all of our plates, I'm just wrapping them all up together. And when I finish, I close it up, tape it shut, put the tape on the counter, and then write kitchen slash dishware box one on it or something like that. And then I move on to the second box and do the same thing. So I'm putting the remainder of our little like lunch size plates as well as some bowls into this box. And then I go to tape it shut and I can't find the tape anywhere. And I remember putting it on the counter, but I am notorious for losing every little thing that I could lose. My phone, my keys, my wallet, my head if it wasn't atta attached to my body. Literally anything that I could lose, I will lose it and put it in like the dumbest place possible. I'm home by myself. There's no one here to help me find this packing tape. So I go into our bedroom looking to see if I maybe had brought it in there with me and set it down on our bed or a nightstand or our dresser. It's not in there. I go into the living room to see if maybe I set it down on the couch or on our coffee table or on our TV stand, something. Can't find it in there either. Tear apart the kitchen again, can't find anything. I'm looking in boxes that hadn't been taped shut yet and eventually I'm just like, you know what? I don't have time for this. Give up, drive down to the little corner store, pick up another pack of packing tape, come back and continue packing and forget about it. I just pulled a Courtney and put the packing tape somewhere stupid. It's not a big deal, whatever, moved on with my life. And that is the last experience I have in this apartment. A few weeks pass after this point, we end up getting all of our stuff packed. We move out. The last day that we were in the apartment, my boyfriend and I walk around and basically tell this thing not to follow us, that it's not welcome in the apartment after we're gone and that it needs to go back to where it came from. You cannot follow us where we're going. We're not welcome to haunt the next tenants here. You are not welcome to haunt this place. And we leave feeling pretty good about the situation. We know that it's not going to follow us and we did everything in our power to make sure it doesn't haunt the next people that live in the apartment. That is the very last thing that we do in this apartment. And then we get into our cars and moving trucks and we move to this apartment here. Oh my God, there's a crow outside. Huh? It made a noise. I hate crows, they scare me so much. And then once we get to this apartment, we start obviously unloading things. And over the first couple of weeks that we live here, we start unpacking boxes. That is the normal moving process. Not surprising to anyone at all. But what is surprising is as we are unpacking all of our kitchen stuff, we come across those two first boxes that I had packed. Kitchen box dishware number one and kitchen box dishware number two. We open up number two first, I believe, and it's fine. Don't find anything, obviously. Then we open kitchen box number one. That was the last box that I packed with that tape. And we're unloading it slowly and it's crazy. You can't fucking make this shit up. He pulls out the packing tape out of this box that I had taped shut with the packing tape that I went out of my mind looking for thinking that I had put somewhere stupid and lost forever. Apparently, somehow, I or something else was able to get that packing tape into the box after I had taped it shut. I was really freaked out because up until this point, I was kind of trying to tell myself that there had to be some sort of natural explanation for it. All of these weird things that were happening in this apartment, to me, there had to be some sort of explanation for it that wasn't paranormal because up until this point, there always had been. I know I sound freaking crazy, you guys. <laughs> like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. I sound like a crazy person, but I swear guys, like, this packing tape had been inside the box. I wish I had like pictures or something because I know all of you guys are going to call me crazy, but I swear it happened. I don't know what else to say. 
other than it happened and I still get uncomfortable thinking about it. That being said, guys, I don't think that the spirit that was haunting that apartment was anything evil or sinister. To me, it just felt like it didn't want me and my boyfriend to move out of that apartment and was trying to do everything in its power to get us to stay. I don't know if that apartment is still haunted. I don't know if us commanding it to leave worked or if the tenants who've lived there after the fact have had similar experiences. But either way, guys, that is my first paranormal experience. That is the start of my ghost story. I know it sounds crazy. I know I'm a crazy person, but I don't really care if people on the internet don't believe me because I know it happened. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the story of my first paranormal experience. That's pretty much it for, for this video. If you made it all the way here to the end and liked what you saw, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Also, make sure you leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of this story. Do you think there are any sort of natural explanations that may be able to shed light on the subject, or do you think that this is truly paranormal? I would love to get your opinion on it. That being said, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. My name is Courtney. I run a paranormal slash earthing channel here on YouTube. I like to play paranormal games, do 3 a.m. challenges, and go to haunted or abandoned places to document those as well. So if that is something that you are interested in and want to see more of, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on your bell notification so that you know every single time that I upload. And with that being said, I will see you guys next week for another new video. Bye.